Hello everyone, and uh, welcome to a vlog. This is Showboat, and uh, yeah, today I want to talk about my recording setup. Uh, yeah, that that's that's basically it. I today I want to talk about my recording setup. So, what shall we begin with? Shall we? Uh, let's start with I guess what we what you're seeing right here. This this thing. This this thing right here. This. This is a Rode brand Procaster. Not the Rode Podcaster, the Rode Procaster. It is uh, an XLR microphone. So, not USB. It's XLR, which uh, is an experience in and of itself. So, wonderful mic. It is attached to a... Behringer brand audio interface, which has XLR in, and then it uh, does USB from there. So it's able to do balancing and other, other stuff. Right now it's just being used for, like, volume, primarily. And, uh, yeah, from there... From there, the audio goes to a program called VST Host, which uh, processes the audio live. It is live processing. Uh, it gets rid of any background noise. It is an equalizer as well, and uh, and a compressor. There's a little bit of compression that we get done there in the live setup. Uh, this uh, this audio in particular is being recorded using the Audacity software, which uh, from there it gets further processed with uh, additional compression and normalization just to make things rather clear. So that's the audio side of things. So that that that's just the audio. Uh, if you want to know my headphones, they're uh, I've actually forgotten. They're wireless. They're wireless headphones. There's they're, they've they've got like a base thing that these hook up to that has the wireless transmission. Uh, I've forgotten the brand. Let me let me take a look. Sennheiser. That's the brand. I've forgotten the actual model, but they're Sennheiser wireless headphones there's a very very slight delay uh, of the signal that i get in these but uh it only really has any meaningful effect when i like i'm playing rhythm based games on the tv um yeah that's the only time there's any effect whatsoever and even then in-game settings can adjust for that, so that is simple enough. Uh, of course, my PC, if you don't already know, the PC itself, uh, i7-5820K processor from Intel. Uh, it is the X99 chipset. Uh, it is sitting on a Gigabyte G1 Gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. It has an integrated killer NIC Ethernet that I'm using. Uh, 16 gigabytes DDR4 memory. I think it's 2666 megahertz, something, something like that. Uh, two GTX 980s. They are Asus Poseidon 980s. They are not the TIs. They are the standard 980s. Uh, they, those things get powered by a Corsair power supply and RM1000, if I'm not completely mistaken, as I as I look at the PC next to me, on a on my on my dresser that's right there. Uh, let's see here, what else is important? Uh, the drives. So I've got two uh, SSDs in RAID Zero. They are 90 gigabyte Corsair Force 3 series SSDs. They hard drives, 
So so my those two in RAID 0 are my boot drive for Windows 10. And hard drives, I've got a lot of hard drives. I have a 640 gigabyte Western Digital Black that was it see that drive is the oldest in the system because that came with my first desktop that I ever bought, that I ever ordered. I ordered a uh, I buy power desktop with a GTX 470. Like five, six, 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 seven, seven, seven. No, couldn't be six. 2000 and no, 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 no. February 2010 or late January, early February 2010. So five and a half years, over five and a half, five and three quarters years that uh, I've had that hard drive. Every single other component from that PC had been replaced or sold. Uh, except for that one hard drive, the 640 Western Digital Black. I use that for, let's see, I put my desktop on there and like miscellaneous media, like video files go on there. Not not too much. I've got a slow 2 terabyte drive, 5400 RPM something. It's a Samsung brand drive. That's mainly used for archived videos. Uh, I have a faster 2 terabyte 7200 RPM from Seagate that is for the same thing. It's archival. I have a 3 terabyte Seagate 7200 RPM drive that uh, is my recording drive. I record to that drive exclusively. That is all it's used for is just recording like raw footage. And I have... I have two more of that same type of drive, the Seagate three terabytes that act in a RAID zero. So there's two RAID zero arrays in my system. One is the two SSDs. The other is those two three terabyte drives. So I have effectively have a six terabyte drive where I keep all of the, uh, all of the video games, all the video games are on that drive. So the entirety of my Steam installation, plus Origin, plus, I don't know, you play, I guess, GOG, stuff like that. All of the things. All of the things. Oh, right, and Battle.net, that's on there, too. All of the things. I have, like, a, I don't know, I have a couple of things on the SSD array. Uh, what do I have on the SSD array again? Oh, huh. I apparently have Kerbal Space Program on the SSD array, as if that would help. As if that helps. It, it doesn't. Um, yeah, I don't tend to keep games on the SSD array because... Because I only have 20 sec, uh, 27 gigs free at the moment. I can free up a bit of space because a lot of that is in temp files. I need to keep that clean constantly because for some weird reason, since I use Adobe products, Premiere uh, in particular, and uh, and the Adobe Media Encoder to render my videos, edit and render, uh, for some reason it likes using C drives temp, even though I'm telling it to use uh, cache files on the other drives, like the slow two terabyte drives is what I tell it to do cache stuff with, but it, uh, it ignores the settings and goes straight to straight to my temp folder in, uh, on C, which is slightly annoying. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's that for the drives. I have eight physical drives in that system, two of which are two and a half uh, inch drives and the others are three and a half inch drives. It completely fills my uh, my cases. Drive cages plus the two SSDs are like behind the motherboard tray. It's uh, rather packed back there. The case itself is a uh, Fantex Enthu Lux. Uh, I don't have the like LED. X the like outside LED strip on at the moment because uh, I just kept tired got tired of turning it off whenever I keep my PC on at night. I haven't lately, but uh, it is something that I do 
on occasion. Uh, the only other thing to mention, that's like all the main hardware type stuff. Um, I do not have an optical drive uh, for the system. I have this external Blu-ray that I can hook up via USB whenever I need a uh, an optical drive. Uh, I have water cooling in this system. As I mentioned, I have two Asus Poseidons. Those have essentially built-in water blocks for water cooling plus fans. So it's uh, hybrid cooling is what they call it, I think. And uh, basically, I've got them hooked up to the water cooling loop as well as my processor. Uh, I have a... Well, I bought this nice kit of a radiator plus a reservoir and pump plus tubing and fittings uh, which I expanded with more well with different fittings and more tubing and of course my own uh, my own colored f water like I got separate uh, UV green dye for it for the water and of course the water treatments so that it doesn't grow any algae in the water uh so that whole setup all the fittings the radiator which by the way the radiator itself is a three by 120 millimeter radiator i think it's something like 40 ish millimeters thick it's a, it's a little strange i forget the exact number for its thickness but i'm pretty sure it's an excess pc Next XSPC uh, radiator and water block for the CPU that came in that kit. Uh, the reservoir is a reservoir pump combo tube reservoir that barely fits uh, against the. Uh, it, it's essentially so you've got the hard drive tray that's vertical, the vertical hard drive tray. You've got the reservoir that's out close to the the door. It's literally touching the side panel window. And it's right up against the two 980s. And of course you've got the you've got the pump that sticks out a little bit over that bottom 980. It's 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 really cramped in there. It is a very tight fit. But it works, which makes me happy. Uh, yeah, and then all the fittings. Got the water block for the CPU. Uh, got the fittings on the Asus Poseidons. It's a, it's a pretty simple setup. It's pretty simple. Uh, uh yeah, it keeps, thing, it keeps things cool, basically. It just, that's its purpose. It keeps things cool. Uh, unfortunately, the CPU is not that. Uh, I did. I did not win the silicon lottery with that CPU. Uh, it does not like being overclocked. It really doesn't like it at all. Um, the memory, I think, is. Like something to do with power to memory is a little bit iffy when the CPU is overclocked. I can uh, barely even just run the memory at its uh, at its rated speed, which is uh, I think twenty six sixty six megahertz on that on that memory. So that's a little weird. Uh, that would be the one part in my system that uh, I would upgrade next, I think, is switching out the uh, 5820K for the, uh, what is it, 5960X is the, uh, is the $1,000 processor at the moment. Uh, although, realistically, I don't need to. I don't have any limitations with this current processor, regardless of its speed if it's overclocked or not the the gpus <laughs> dependent upon drivers which lately drivers have sucked so the i 
don't think I currently have them overclocked at all just to keep them as stable as possible in the most recent games, like Witcher 3, for instance. A lot of games lately are hating overclocks. They're also hating a SLI, which is uh, rather unfortunate. Uh, so that's the computer itself. Uh, monitors. So I've got the mo this monitor in front of me. This is a... Uh, Ooh, gosh, I always forget the name of this. An ROG. It's an Asus ROG uh, monitor. I forget the exact model number of it off the top of my head, but it is a 1440p monitor. So 2560 by 1440, 144 hertz G Sync monitor. It's a TN panel, though. It's not uh, one of those fancier panels. What I do have that is a fancier panel is the one that's next to it, and that's this Korean brand Qnix 2560x1440, oh, both 27-inch monitors, these, these two. They're 27-inch monitor. That one's, I think they called it a PLS panel. And uh, it is a much, it, it is much more clear than this one. It, it's a clearer... Better, it has better colors than this one, I think. But this that this one, the uh, the Cunix, is mainly for still images. It's best for still images. This one is fine for gaming. Uh, I don't have any problems with this one. I think this one is the superior monitor, partly because this one was like freaking seven hundred dollars, and that one was like uh, three. Big difference between the two in price. Apparently because this one's also name brand, and then that one's this Korean brand that could have had dead pixels when it arrived, but thankfully it didn't. And then next to that is my 50-inch Vizio TV, which, uh, yeah, that's a thing. Uh, it uh, is a 1080p smart TV with built-in wireless, so yeah, that's a... That's a thing. I have my computer hooked up to it. It is my it is my third monitor. It is unfortunately just 1080p, not 1440, so eh, slight issues there. Um, I do have it set to do the full ten the full 1080 stuff. When I first hooked it up on Windows 10, it was like really tiny. For some reason, it was like it was magnifying things. So it was effectively 720. It's like, no, turn off that magnification, please. I don't need that magnification. Freaking 50-inch TV. 1080 is great. 1080 is great on that TV as I as I look over at it. I hardly ever I hardly use it, but uh I do use it for Netflix, which is a, which is a thing. I just have my PC have Netflix up on it and watch it there. Lots of videos. Lots of videos get watched on that. As well as every console. So Speaking of which, consoles. Uh, actually, before we get to consoles, what do I use to actually record? That's the other thing. Besides the audio, what do I use to record the video? Well, I have used OBS for a very long time. Uh, that's this particular video. The, the video itself is being recorded via OBS. The audio, of course, is being recorded via Audacity. Uh, the reason I don't use OBS anymore because I want to get as high of quality of raw footage as possible when I record video games. So, lately, when I record PC, I am starting to use... Oh, uh, not, bleh, I'm starting to use DxTory, which is uh, far more versatile than Fraps. Let's, let's be completely honest there. Far more versatile than Fraps. Uh, the last PC games, though, that I recorded... Uh, Ori and the Blind Forest and Dust and Elysian Tale. Those I recorded using XSplit. Uh, I've had problems using XSplit for recording on PC because anytime, anytime the recording ends up being a uh, half an hour or so or longer, uh, there will be some issues with... Uh, with the audio syncing, for some weird reason, there's is there are issues with the audio syncing. Uh, like there'll be a, at some a seemingly random point, 
frames will just glitch and yeah, there'll be there'll be like a segment of glitchiness on the video itself that when I import into Premiere, for instance, when it gets to that part, it truncates the video. It just truncates it. So that makes the whole of the audio that's after it, the audio that's after it, out of sync with the video by upwards of two seconds. Uh, so that was the thing that I dealt with with uh, Ori and Dust. And it's why I'm no longer using XSplit to do any recording whatsoever. I had bought a three-year license that I am regretting at this point because... It's glitchy as hell. It's like, I like all, all of the features in it, which is why I bought it. I liked the features of it. It is far more feature rich than OBS. But when it's glitching out like that, what the freaking hell am I supposed to do? Right? I can't use it. I can't use it. Ah, but thankfully I've, I have moved on. I am, I, Definitely have the hard drive space to record uh, to record raw footage directly. Uh, as for why I'm using OBS here for this particular video of the webcam, well, <laughs> the webcam software has stopped working for uh, recording videos. Seriously, I pushed the button for it to record. And it didn't start recording. It went, it counted down three, two, one, and then nothing. It's just the button goes back to what it was before you pushed it to start recording again. So I pushed the button again, three, two, one, nothing. Push the button again, nothing, nothing, over and over and over again. I don't know what the problem is there, and I'm not going to try to fix it either because honestly, doing the OBS way is far easier. Far, far easier. Ooh. So, that's what I'm doing for the actual PC side of recording. What about consoles? Well, for consoles, I have a wonderful diagram that uh, I made myself by hand that uh, I get to show you now. So that's going to be up on the screen. So, for consoles, I have PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Wii U, and the Wii and GameCube. So the Wii, I want to mention, is only for GameCube games. I have a Wii that I have just recently, in fact it just arrived today, uh, bought that is backwards compatible with GameCube games. That is attached to my old capture card, which is my Elgato Game Capture HD. My GameCube is only used for the Game Boy Player, uh, because you can't really hook up a Game Boy Player to a, to a Wii, now can you? Uh, so that's used for all of the handheld stuff. Uh, which again has to go through the Elgato, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. The PS4, the Xbox One, the Wii U, which also records Wii, those are all rather simple. They just go to a switcher that goes to my current capture card, which is the internal Live Gamer HD. It is part of my computer, hooked up uh, actually between my two 980s on a PCI Express slot. And it has a pass-through, so from that device it goes there's a cable to the TV. The PlayStation 3 is uh, a little bit more complicated cuz uh you can't turn off the uh copy protection on the uh video stream for that. So I have an HDMI to DVI cable plus a Toslink audio cable hooking into a converter device that takes those two signals and converts it to HDMI uh, without the uh, without the copy 
right uh, signal in it. So then that goes to the switcher, which then goes to the Live Gamer HD, which then goes to the TV and my PC. Wonderful. The Elgato has to be used for the Wii and GameCube devices because the Live Gamer HD is not compatible with composite nor component connections at all. It is not compatible. I have tried. Trust me. I have tried. I have several different converters. I have like three different converters slash uh, upscaler devices to uh, convert them to HDMI because the Live Gamer HD is... It only accepts an HDMI input. So... I thought it would be a simple enough to just get like a uh, composite RCA. It's that, that's that's the uh, red, white, and yellow uh, connector. Get a converter box that converts that to HDMI. Well, it happens that uh, the only boxes that do that also happen to upscale the resolution to 720 or 1080p. And for some reason, that uh, is completely incompatible with the Live Gamer HD. It, uh, it will pass through the signal just fine, but it will not record the signal. It will just be a blank screen in the RE Central uh, software for that device. It's the same thing with the component connections. The, uh, the green, red, blue, red and white cables. Yeah, that the same situation even if it's just a pass through which i have a device that is just a it's just a converter it's not an upscaler it's just it just takes component to hdmi even that is very finicky with the live gamer hd it's theoretically possible i have seen it have the video on my screen not on the pass through well it did go through the pass-through, but it made the uh, screen, like, sepia-toned. For some reason, I don't know. It was really, really odd, and it only did that after, like, unhooking the HDMI and plugging it back in while the system was on. And then eventually I tried it again, and it didn't... that didn't work. So, yeah, weirdest of things with that. Uh, and then, of course, a component to HDMI upscaler to 1080p also didn't work. Uh, so yeah, that uh, has forced my hand to going to the Elgato, which, <sighs> unfortunately, same thing. It does not, uh, doesn't quite work with those upscalers. Um, and pass-throughs, it, it just doesn't quite work with them. I don't, I don't know why it just doesn't work so much. And uh, so I'm just using the standard inputs on the Elgato and recording through the Elgato rather than the Live Gamer HD uh, through the basic uh, uh, component cable that's included with the Elgato uh, because the component cable that's included with the Elgato happens to also be able to uh, get pick up the uh, composite signal from older systems. So that's the red, white, yellow. As I said, it's able to connect the yellow video stream to the green uh, input and pick up all of the video from that. So yeah, that's a that's that's a thing. Uh, I have tried. So this is why the Elgato's pass through is connected to the five port switcher which goes to the live gamer hd which passes through to the tv i have tried recording the elgato's pass through output with the live gamer hd the unfortunate part is that the elgato outputs a copy protected signal which is so very sad i wish it didn't but it does uh i if i had a live gamer portable I would be able to do that, but with the Elgato, I cannot. It, it, it outputs a uh, copy-protected signal through its pass-through. 
I don't know why they would have it do that. It just does. It just does. So that's the basic setup of the uh, of the consoles, and uh, that basically covers all of the recording setup, like all the important bits and pieces of the recording setup. So perhaps I should mention why I have a Live Gamer HD and an Elgato. So the Elgato is older than the Live Gamer HD. I got the Live Gamer HD because it doesn't have a normally perceivable delay uh, in terms of the video that it's recording. So what is what gets sent to the PC there is essentially no delay. It is there. There is a very, very tiny delay. Uh, it is perceivable when playing uh, rhythm games. It is perceivable then, I, it, to the point where you just can't play them. Um, but the Elgato, it's more like two and a half seconds of a delay. So I can't play on my computer screen. Like, I can't play on the screen with this mic set here in an ideal position. I just can't do that uh, with the Elgato. I, ha I have to use the TV where it is getting that live signal. And that means I have to turn myself all the way around as I bump into the desk. And uh, I have to reposition this mic into what ends up being a relatively not ideal uh, position. It works, but uh, it, does it does impact the audio quality a little bit, uh, just from the an unideal position. Uh, so that is why I went through all that trouble trying to get it to work through the Live Gamer HD for those older consoles. And that's also why I exclusively use that Live Gamer HD on all of the newer consoles that uh, have HDMI inputs. So I think that about covers it. Yeah, that about covers that. So with that, I would like to thank you all for watching. This has been Showboat, and I will see you all on the next one.